que Sunset Conversations is a live stream project which brings in conversation international art related people. It is an alternative to superficial IG story content. To build up something with a stronger intellectual value. This is the fifth session of Sunset Conversations and we're waiting for Fernando Mastrangelo who just joined us. I'm inviting him now. We're running 15 minutes late, so as I just landed from London and I had to reset my studio. Hi, Fernando. What's up? How are you? Fantastic. Fantastic to see you. Yeah, nice <laughs> to been see you too. For so long without seeing each other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So can you hear me well? Because I, as I told you, I just had to reset up my studio. I've been traveling over the week, so I was, I was quite you. busy. I hear you. Uh, thanks for accepting our invitation. And uh, I know you're very comfortable with live streams because you, you're doing so well <laughs> yeah. on social media. Like, you know, with other guests, I, I had to prepare them a little bit, like, and they stressed out, but I'm sure you're very comfortable. I always watch your videos, you're making these super um, episodes, you know, how to, to be an active artist and fight the, the world of art, you know, yeah. the competition. <laughs> I want to know everything about it, but let me just give an introduction about you. Uh, Fernando is a very um, uh, renowned designer who works with casting. He does a lot of sculpture furniture. Uh, it mixes salt with other materials, and I want to ask you a lot of things about it. But I mean, let's first um, introduce yourself, if you want. Yeah, so I'm Fernando Mastrangelo, and I live in New in uh, Brooklyn, New York. And so I've been making sculpture and design now for almost 15 years here in the city. And then um, the last five years, really, really been focusing in on design. And not just furniture anymore, but now interiors, uh, continue to make sculpture, large scale, and, um, and then now content creation, which is uh, all for, you know, to, to, to sort of help the branding of the studio. So. Absolutely. No, I actually saw, seen that this year you, you just started expanding and expanding and expanding. At one point, I really wanted to be with you guys, so we didn't manage to... <laughs> to connect because honestly I, I get so inspired about your work and nice. uh, I, I was trained as an architect and all my uh, art started within the realm of architecture so I, every time I saw a, a piece of yours you know I was kind of seeing <laughs> myself as well um, I read, I read, I read an, an interview of you and you don't want to call yourself an activist anymore and uh, yeah and I'm quite surprised because I, I think you're doing a really active job. And when I say active, I mean also socially and politically for the messages that you put in your pieces. So can you talk about what you said a little yeah. bit? You know, I think what, what I was probably talking about in that article was being a Latino uh, artist activist, right? Because what I started to find was that I started to get feeling a little bit pigeonholed by uh, the fact that I had to be identified as Latino or, 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 or something like that to give my work some sort of level of credibility. But so in that way, I've become less of an activist in, in my work because my work used to be very political. It used to mm -hmm. be about a lot of Latino issues. Mm -hmm. And so over the years, I've let go of being this idea of an identity as a Latino and just think, I'm just a human being, right? Experiencing the world. And I can talk about all of my experiences. You know, in 2011 and 12, I was working on a piece about social media. And then mm -hmm. that had nothing to do with, uh, with being Latino. And then, you know, started doing more abstract work that was, uh, that started to feel really good. And I realized that I don't have to inject this sort of activism into the work anymore because we're all sort of dealing with the same bullshit all the time. So, mm -hmm. you know, so I, so I feel like I became more of a universal um, 
activist. Like right now, I deal a lot with climate change in my work. I feel like yeah. that's a very political stance to take. Um, so it's still there, but it's not about being Latino anymore. It's not about... I, I, I understand now. I yeah. understand. Yeah. Sometimes in these interviews, we don't have enough... Context. <laughs> yeah, to, yeah, to express ourselves. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, now it's more clear. And um, I actually wanted to to really tell you my opinion on your art. And I think your art is so full of content. I Every time I get surprised about also how um, um, you play with materials in terms of adding some weird objects in it. When, I, when you added a bit of diamond, uh, crushed diamond, or I don't know if you added some... Um, some other substances, but like cocaine yeah, or something, like very provocative um, actions, you know, like because they're now buried in that piece of rock, and actually yeah. every piece of rock got some of it. It's got <laughs> dead bodies, and so I was wondering, are you planning to put a dead body in your in your chest to in hide my, one? In my chest, or what do you mean? In my in my in my in my work? Yes. Well, do you, I guess you don't know about my 2010 project, uh, the, the, MS <laughs> the MS-13 pieces, where we, where we cast human ash. Okay, yeah, yeah, I heard about the hush. I was starting yeah. to think about a real one, you know, like oh, mafia no, used to do it. So. <laughs> in, in a construction, no, no. foundation of the buildings. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. No, no. <laughs> um, but I'm always, you know what it is? It's always in search for materials that have metaphor built into them, right? So salt has always functioned as a preservative, and it also it works as something that can erode things, right? So it's this beautiful uh, kind of harmony in that, that we use salt to preserve meat, right? But also if you leave salt out on a table or something, it will destroy the table over time. And so looking for metaphor all the time in the work and trying for the materials to make sense with the content of the piece, mm -hmm. always. And so in, in those days, I was trying to deal with this idea of life and death and how can you express that in a material? Mm -hmm. and so human ash, salt, these things started to resonate for me as a way to, um, to describe my ideas through a tangible material. You know yeah, what I mean? Like to, right. me, to me, it's like, how can you make a piece of sculpture? Like, let's say it's any subject matter. Uh, you know, every subject matter has a, an affiliate material. Uh, so let's say I was making work about uh, the Aztecs, it would, I, which I did. But uh, I'm, uh, an example is that uh, they use terracotta, right? Mm -hmm. like, so if I was thinking about making a piece about Mexico or the history of Mexico in some way, I might think about using terracotta as my material mm -hmm. to then be able to make sure that the idea and the materials are linked together uh, to, to create a har harmony in the artwork. So Very, very nice. Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. And this is what I call activism nowadays, you know, because you're making sensible things sensible choices uh, I mean also you know salt is it's a material that and in the academia I've been studying and teaching and I have seen lots of people really um, speculating about salt but sometimes in a very superficial way and I had lots of students bringing you as a precedent because your work uh, is just it so expresses so well the potentials of that material. Because, mm. I mean, uh, you know, like, especially now in, 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 in the academias, there's a lot of, um, we want to rediscover, like, raw materials and uh, um, active materials. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the salt is a, is a material that changes over time. It transforms oh. itself. And it oh. can grow. It could grow vertically which is quite amazing. And I mean, you catch all that power and you stick it in a piece. 
And that's what I call activism, you know, you have a manifest. Um, and also what I really like about you is that I, you recently, I don't know whether it's that recent, but I discovered uh, last year that you have this uh, FM present where you um, present new artists in your studio. So you, you select upcoming designers or established designers and you create a kind of show together in your, in your um, warehouse. Can you talk about absolutely. this project again? Sure. You're absolutely right. It's called um, FMS Presents In Good Company. And the show's called In Good Company. And, okay, it started, it started two years ago. And now it's actually two and a half years ago. And it's really grown. Um, look, I wanted to, I'll be very honest about what, why I did this. That year that we moved into the new studio, which is a massive warehouse in Brooklyn, I had done four exhibitions that year, solo exhibitions. I had a lot of attention around my work in that time period. And I had a very hard road to get to success. It was not just like, you know, I'm 40 years old. I've been working at this for many years. And so when I got to this amazing, huge, beautiful space that was kind of a dream come true, I wanted to give back right away because I was like, that was the only way that I couldn't feel guilty about having, you know, this, this like kind of tremendous weird success in the last five years. And so I thought, okay, let's, have, put on, yes. let's put on an exhibition for young people who struggle to, to get their work out into the world, which is very hard to do without the right support structure. And let's erase money from the whole context. Like, we're not going to sell their work. We're not going to um, try to take a commission on the work. We're just going to do this as a, as, a, as a community building event for the year where we get to have some fun. We get to introduce some new people to, to, the, to the market. And we did it the first year. And... The art, you know, the return on investment for that was all like internal for me. Like it made me feel good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's fantastic. Me, yeah, and it made me feel like I could reconnect with, a, you know, the up and coming generation, which makes me feel young and makes me feel current and it makes me feel so, you know, it's a give and take. Like I give, but it gives me back so much more. So I was like, this is great. And so then immediately this, you were like, we're going to do this again. And we did it again last yes. year. And I turned it into a nonprofit organization. Um, and now we're going to grow it. Year three is going to be spectacular. I mean, we wow. have some, we have an amazing uh, guest curator coming on board to, to help curate the exhibition. And uh, it's going to be tremendous. So anyway, that's why I did it. And now we're watching so many of those people have success in the design world. It's incredible. Like, no, it's, it's really incredible. And I, I think it's very important that artists help each other in, in a world of, you know, art is also a finance market. You know, it's a financial market. There's a lot of people speculating around it. And, you yes. know, Artists could make a big difference if they help each other. If they, I mean, and you do it selecting the right people because I can see you have a really good eye and that comes across when, when we look at your page. You can curate things. Yeah. You, can, you never get a piece wrong. The colors are always right. You know, I don't know where you get your precedence from, whether it's from something inside you, something that you've absorbed in your childhood. Could become from from observing nature, as you said, but also, like, you, you're quite updated in, in what's going on um, in the research of beauty, let's call it. But yeah. you always get it right. Thank and you. also the artists that you select, when you put them together in your space, it was done so neatly and tidily that each Thank piece you. seemed to belong to each other. Yeah. And the way you, you introduced those artists... I mean, I was really impressed, and I have to compliment it. There are people, you're very young, you, you already have pieces 
all over America and in the world. You entered big museums and and um, foundations. You are, you yeah. sold a piece to Cooper Hewitt, which is yeah. one of my favorite source of uh, inspiration. <laughs> Thank you. Collection and in, and uh, I don't know. I I'm really yeah. happy that you putting I, I, all these materials out. Like you want to explain people how you do it, and you know, like you're making this effort to make videos and stuff, which of course they brings you something back, which could be happiness. It could lead you to another um, road. You know, m more to do with with. Um, uh, putting yourself as a character as well, yes, uh, not yes. just your object. But you just, I could see there's there's a clear thinking in that, and and there's a and there's a honest mind. Yeah, it doesn't look at the number you know, of followers I, of I, the I, people yeah. who you are presenting. You know, you can really feel that you you're a honest activist. Sorry if I use the word activist too often, but. I was impressed no, when you no, I get, were I get not. Where you're, I get where you're coming from with it. I, you're right that it's activism, man. Like trying to break down the old structures of artists being suppressed by galleries and the restriction Sometimes. of the market, right? And the restriction of being able to sell your work direct to the people that actually love it and being the start of the breakdown of that system, right, is it's exciting to me and I want to make sure that other people recognize that this is available to you now. Like the world has opened up for artists. It's like, yes, we now have the opportunity to, to reach a global audience with one photo. <laughs> Dude, yeah. The, the power of that is, is beyond our understanding. Okay. And so, even though we're still in this rhythm of the galleries and the art fairs, those things are going to start to crumble just like every other major institution in the world has crumbled. And because a lot of it is, is based on such deep levels of greed and, and market manipulation that people are fed up and I'm fed mm -hmm. up with it. And, you know, I was like, so if I can become a character in the design world where I'm, I'm trying to propose a new model for people to think with and, and maybe use in their own studios, that seems to me like where I want to try to disrupt the industry if I can't, you know what I mean? Like little by little, if it's fucking YouTube uh, video to YouTube video or, 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 or stories or wherever we can have that kind of impact and start having people feel like, you know, uh, in charge of their own destiny when it comes to their work. Like, man, I grew up with artists who their only goal was to get a gallery. And then when, yes. when, when they didn't get the gallery, they felt depressed and they felt, you know, they compared themselves. All these, and then they lose momentum and they stop making work. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. So I want to say, like, you know, we're trying to encourage a different type of behavior. And I'm saying, look. These are the new avenues. These are the channels. Like, let's reach people. Talk to people about your work, man. Like, or, you know, so. And I want to try to demystify how hard it is. It is hard. But let's look at it. Let's peel the curtain back and say, okay, how is this guy operating? You know, like, how does Damien Hurst operate his studio? How, does, how do these people operate their studios? to be successful financially, conceptually, art historically, you know what I mean? Right. And so, right. And, uh, no, no. so it's an interesting I, th time. I think we're producing a lot of material in this uh, conversation that people will access and uh, will start ponder about it. Because I, I'm, I'm doing these conversations again, uh, it's, it's, ab it's about connecting people and uh, I want to keep a low rest but a high content which is what we're doing and in a very you know, unpretentious I, setting. I wanted to mention this to you that I love this format because thank you it's it's so it's exactly our time you know it's like this yes. is exactly our time like we don't need to be broadcasting on CBS or CNN 
this is the grassroots level of people actually getting information exchange right through exactly. you know, and, and, and even though you can you can have a, a, a YouTube channel or this or that but this is the way that this is happening now you know what I mean and yes. although we're live and we'd love to have hundreds of thousands of people watching us this is the beginning of that because it yes. grows from exactly. you know what I mean it grows from 10 people to then a hundred people watch and then people are like yes. oh shit I, I'm going to catch that episode of Sunset Conversation, Absolutely. you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's Absolutely, it's and, and this is what I really like about it. And um, I, I always say that I, I have lots of people asking me about this project, you know, and I always say everyone should do it, you know. I would be really happy if every person I speak to or listen <laughs> would do it as well. Because we're producing sensitive and sensible content. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of crap that we need to fight. Yeah. And to fight crap, you don't need to shout at crap. You need yeah. to create a parallel channel of <laughs> intellectual content. That's right. Because and if then, you shout back, you're creating more crap. <laughs> yeah. You're right. And you know what happens, mm. the beauty of this is that everyone else it takes everyone else a very long time to catch up and then they've already missed the boat on it right so you're early enough where you understand that this that this is how things are going to be you know in the, in the near future or it's already happening and it's going to take people like five years to catch up and then they'll be like oh should Excellent. we be doing should we be doing live video chats on our channel and then you're like yeah you should have been doing it five years ago when the technology started and get in there early yeah. and, and, and kind of claim your, claim your stake in that, you know, in that, in that uh, channel. Yeah. And uh, I, always, I also believe in creating uh, with this material an archive that people will access in the future. <laughs> so, you know, like you're growing really fast yeah. and uh, your mind will change, you know, eventually. Yeah. So yeah. it's really important we archive yourself today and yeah. in 10 years this is gonna become a valuable talk you know oh, man. because maybe you won't even do this talk anymore you know you're gonna be president of america who knows you grow <laughs> so is, quickly and the thing, man. <laughs> we have this weird opportunity to record our lifetime right in a weird way, because look, like we read books about famous artists that we loved and famous designers, and we have to look back in the books. And then, you know how sometimes you'll see photos of the artists in their studios working, like Giacometti working on his plasters, and, and you romanticize their lives through the photos, right? But that's all, that's the only imagery that you have. But today, exactly. if, if I ever have kids or if I ever leave, you know, things behind, people will say, I can go see who Fernando was by the content that he created, by the videos, by the interviews that he did. And then they can see who the person is and not romanticize me as some character. Exactly. Who they see in a large studio, you know, with a, you know, carving a, look, man, like I spend a lot of time. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, no, I totally agree. You know what Um, I mean? that's the beauty of this thing that 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 live and all this stuff can do is is absolutely is, absolutely i i totally agree we don't need to uh, especially in a in a system of appearance you know that because these platforms they promote just the appearance of things you miss yeah. the other senses you know it's generally just an image you miss you miss the sound of things you know i mean of course the smell of things and and you always have a, a faked experience. And yes. uh, I think we, we really need to, to explain people that that is just not 100% real. And behind it, there are just normal people. Yeah, and sometimes exactly. I get these messages which are worrying me that people believe that we have a super life and, you know, we are superheroes, but we, we just not. And yeah. if that message comes across, it means we need to tune it a bit and we need yeah. to show ourselves and so, and show also how 
stupid I can be or how simple I can be, how bad I speak English, you know, how, how you know, bad I look after a plane and things, yeah. how tired you could feel on a Sunday evening, you know, because yeah. we are humans. And when you start doing, when I say you, when people start just promoting themselves in that fictionary world of them having a perfect time, them staying in that great swimming pool, drinking the perfect drink. You know, it, people <laughs> know. just start feeling like a side in the world, said, I'm not leaving. And actually, that is fictionary. And I'm sure, like, that is. Because everyone has experienced that stuff. And it doesn't make you feel better. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, make you I feel guess. a superhero. It's just not... So that's and I, also in this conversation, I don't really ask you, like, how do you cast that thing? You know, like, right. you know, this sort of information. There's the web, which can give you a lot of them. There's the, yeah. the web search already, and it gives you a lot of. I'm more interested on showing our real selves, sure. you know, and and talking deeply about things. But there's one question I really wanted to ask. Yeah. You. Um, because I'm always impressed uh, how open you are and how clearly you, you show your process. Um, and I, I see lots of artists struggling with, with exposing their secrets. And you tend to really not. It's like you always want to teach. You have this tendency of teaching. Like, you know, guys, I also tell you what kind of uh, casting mix I used. You tell about your molding mix. I mean, that is quite impressive because, you know, especially I'm sure New York is really competitive and you are teaching yeah. this job every year to 10 people who yeah. could eventually, you know, like overtake you or something. And I wonder how do you deal with it? Well, that's a really great question, and it's something that's come up before, obviously. And I look at it this way. I, this language is, is very much mine right now. It feels like it's mine. I own the language, and I think for a long time, people, artists struggle because they, they, they don't feel confident that they have a language that's their own just yet because someone could come in and, you know, take it from them or something like this, right? But... The work that we make now is so complicated and insane to produce and so heavily entrenched in the language and concepts of my work that I'm willing to show it all because if anyone tries to like lean into my territory, into the territory of the work and like take my techniques and things like this, it's going to be very clear uh, that, 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 they, that they are doing that at this point. There's no one, there's not a lot of people that won't uh, recognize that, that, would, that they would be ripping me off or, this, or, or, or stealing the techniques. And honestly, feel free to steal the techniques. Like, use them. Take the language to another place. It, it, you know, expand on it, but make it your own. Don't copy mine. Take the techniques. Take them. Fucking make incredible things with, you know. I worked for Matthew Barney in 2004 and five, and, and he's an incredible artist. And he made things out of cast objects. I made a, a cast shrimp piece, yeah, like, like dehydrated shrimp, and we made a piece. And so I took the language from Matthew, and then I exploded it into another realm. And so I'm saying, like, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys how we do all of this stuff because I'm not worried about someone st stealing the process. Well, who cares? I mean, we put sand and resin and these materials together and we combine them and we engineer it all. But, like, it's very hard to do. So if someone wants to steal it, I say go for it and just expand on the language. Just don't copy. I want, I want to see, you know, if, if my work can have, uh, legacy where other people t use it as a bridge, you know, as a bridge to another place. Fucking great. You know, man, like, I'm the one that's deep in the language of my work. 
Like, I know all of the idiosyncratic things about it, you know? That the way that it feels and the way that when things blend and the way the strata layer should be. That, for someone to catch up is like, it doesn't even cross my mind anymore. You know what I mean? So that's why I give it all I up. Totally, I totally know what you're saying. I totally know what you're saying. I mean, absolutely, I agree. I agree. Yeah. You know, Fernando, like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, I, say, I feel like it'd be similar to, I've always loved the Damien Hurst pieces where they're inside of the formaldehyde. And I always thought, man, we could make such interesting tables like that, right? Where we float landscape inside of formal, whatever, right? As a conceptual thing. But if I did it, even though I love it, people would say, well, that's like Damien Hurst. And, you know, and so artists don't do it. You, you don't do it because you honor the person who, in, who kind of came up with that language, you know? And yeah. so I want to be inspired by Damien Hurst and say, I mean, I'm using Damien Hurst. He's one of my artists I love, but he's not like my favorite. But the point is like, you take what you can from the people that you admire and then you grow it. Absolutely. And that's what the history of art teaches exactly. us, you know, that we always need to start from somewhere and then re-express it. Because the, our research has started ages ago. We're just continuing that research, you know, which is art. Yeah. Uh, art is the trace of people in the earth. Uh, but Fernando, very, very nice talking to you. I mean, I, I think myself, yeah, yeah. I will re-watch this. Because there's a lot <laughs> to uh, to feel in what yeah. we said, and I I will definitely have to rewatch it myself. Yeah, it's good. You've been really nice, and uh, I wish I wish I could come soon to to your studio and uh, visit yeah. your, your workshop. And same you, like wherever you wanna travel around Italy and come here, I can show you. I'm gonna some be in Milan on the twenty seventh. I'm gonna, I'm when gonna are you going to be around? I'm going to be in Milan. In Milan, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm in Sicily. If you want to come by, uh, you can definitely do, and I'll be happy to, to take you around some nice uh, caves. Thank you. <laughs> we will talk about it. We'll talk about sure. it. But Listen, like, man, it would be great. I like what you're doing. I think this is cool. I think this is contemporary. I think you should try to explode this uh, interview series. Keep it raw. Keep it like this. And, uh, you know, man, like, I'm a fan, so this is cool, you know? I think you're doing the right way. Like, Thank you. Getting, like, I could have sat here and, and talked a lot about my work and what it means to me and about climate change and about where the earth is going and all this shit, but I like that you're trying to get to the human side of who people are and maybe a little Excellent. bit of what they struggle with and a little bit about the, rea the reality of being an artist or a designer today versus just like me glorifying my work by saying like, exactly. oh, you know, I'm, I'm making the drift mirrors because listen, man, you know, like I'm a human dude. Like I go through a lot of emotions about everything. Exactly. So. Like I, I have a really strong interest in your mirrors. Like don't get me wrong, yeah. but you know, I want to cut this moment yeah. and talk about something else. I want to know what's behind that process, which is here. Exactly. No, but thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks very so much. kind words. And uh, per perhaps in one year, we can have another conversation and see okay. where we're going to be. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my man. All right, Fantastic, see you later. Man. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you next week, everyone. Thanks for listening.